Here is the Master Pro Teardown with Albert. Let's get into it. Okay. So I broke the seat. This is courtesy of me being careless. <laughs> but I will say that this seat is actually a different design than the Master Pro V1. Uh, there are actually some changes to this that they did, which are all, I mean, some of them are good changes, like the battery boxes being metal. Uh, this provide, probably provides some structural rigidity on the back end. Uh, and then the light was changed. So we'll go into more detail on the changes on that. All right. So the comparison between these two, Albert. Uh, yeah, so we have version one here on my side. I guess that's the right, or is that the left? Left. Left. And uh, the version two there on the right. Um, the biggest notable difference is right off the bat would be the headlight, um, <laughs> the battery cases, as well as this off-road tire. So there was a lot of complaints, and I had the similar complaint, was this tire was very soft on the sidewall. So this tire looks pretty beefy. Um, and then I broke that seat today because that was my fault. So ignore the broken seat. Yeah, that just caught on something and when it, it, it fell over. So yeah. whoopsies. Um, other than that, really, it's, I mean, the version one Master Pro owners, if you talk to your distributors, should be getting the metal battery boxes for free from Bigode. Uh, we looked into, I was watching the EUC upgrades video this morning, the EX30, and the, I won't do it today, but the battery boxes they do have a rubber seal that goes around on the top cap. So they are much better water sealed than the plastic ones. Yeah. Um, and they'll provide less flex. But then yep. there's also a lot heavier. And we didn't even get any of the V1 Master Pros in. So we don't even have any customers with the plastic box worry on the pro for Master Pros anyway. Yeah. And then if you look at the back, the differences would be, unfortunately, they're still using the same linkage, it seems like. Yeah, they are. So um, getting looking into the Bigode linkage upgrade would be a very beneficial thing, especially for such a heavy wheel. Um, this one has the flippable spring-loaded kickstand, whereas the new one has the master-style beefy kickstand. Flimsy, though. And it doesn't stand up unless the ground is perfectly level. We Which noticed. is very typical with all wheels. Most, yeah. 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 I mean, there's, there's certain standouts like V12s that are pretty stable. But on the most part, the S22, uh, but on the most part, they're pretty laterally not that stable. But it does not topple over or have the issue of topple over like the master did, where the weight balance nope. was too high up. Um, oh, this is a nice tail light. Yeah, I'll let you in. Thanks. So they've uh, made the tail light a bit smaller, but it looks similar to like an S22 style tail light, which is cool. Um, also, a small note with all the new suspension shock upgrades, the valve stem is pointing 45 degrees out. So it's much easier to kind of screw in the valve and fill it up. Whereas previously, it's pointing downwards into the taillight. So you'd have to do a bit of this and a shenagle. Um, and then if this is clean, it's not so much a worry. But once this is all gunky and dirty, your hands get really gunked up in there. Oh, the uh, spacer is a lot bigger. They use the EX30 spacers, which is a lot wider. It give you a lot more clearance. Most likely because of the off-road knobby tire that's a bit wider. Mm, so they yes. need the extra clearance. Oh, there was one complaint with the EX30 seat was that these edges were really sharp. So without the stock pads, you would feel the edge on the inner of your leg, uh, which should cause some discomfort. It's good to see that they tapered it a little bit, but it's not as tapered as it was on the old Master Pro. Yeah, it also looks like this shades the display better. So maybe you'll, when the sun's coming on an angle, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see the display better during the day compared to how wide open this is. Yeah. I think that's probably why they did it like that. But or just sexier lines. I mean, for DIYers, the one benefit that I liked about this old display, if you come on this side, was that this area here was open, uh, and I actually mounted a voltage display up here. Right. But with the new design, because they covered up that area, you don't have any room to put your voltage display anymore. Yeah, unless you have to cut it out. Yeah. Oh, the top cover is actually different. They actually follow the EX30 top cover now, which is better. Uh, Master Pro V1 top cover, Follow the old master style with the two part. It's more water resistant this way. More water resistant, exactly. So that's a good a good change to see. It looks very similar to the master controller. There's a gasket on there. They, they, they all have that gasket. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, we can take apart that top display and see underneath it. So similar to the Master Pro V1, which I didn't like, uh, the way they mounted the motherboard. Uh, with the T4, the stems on the lower motherboard are actually screwed into the base. And so you can remove the display without removing or moving the controller. With the Master Pro, I'm not sure why they chose to use very long screws. Um, and what they end up using is just a spacer. 
to space the two boards, which ends up being a little bit more of a hassle when you try to put it back together. So looking at this board, it actually looks very similar to the Commander Pro board with the five MOSFETs on the top. Um, and I believe it's the same board as the Master board that also has five uh, capacitors on the top. Okay. The EX30 is slightly different because it actually has seven capacitors. Oh, right, man. Yeah. So that one has a unique motherboard. But yeah, as you can see, like all this stuff just kind of fell in there now. And so to put it back together, I need to... Oh, I see. It's just a, it's a small thing, but it's kind of frustrating sometimes. If you take apart a T4, the, um, that copper sleeve is actually a threaded insert. So it's a double thread. Looks pretty similar. I'll leave that as is. Won't touch that. Okay. Um, the good thing, one the good thing I will say is now that these, the seat screws onto the top plate here, um, this light can be adjusted freely in terms of angle. Whereas the previous version master, it was screwed into the headlights. So you, it looked like you could adjust it, but really you can't. Right. Uh, so now this can adjust freely from the mount. So you don't have to blind everyone. I will say that this light is different than the M104. It's a bit smaller. In yeah, diameter. it does seem to have a, a longer throw from what we've seen, but... Is it, we'll, is it fairly focused? We'll test that in when we do okay. our light test in our review, but... What I will say with the M104 is uh, flipping this the other way ended up giving us a really good spread. Oh, interesting. So you can play with that later. Cool. I mean, if people wanted to retrofit this stand, the good thing is I think it's all very common. So you just need to buy this new uh, battery bracket, and then you can buy the new stand and retrofit onto your version v, uh, Master Pro V1. Oh, good to know. If you wanted the extra strengthening, because uh, I think it would provide a little bit of strength in terms of the, the flex. Battery flexing. Yeah, the yeah. battery flex. So there's the motor. Uh, the shock looks the same. I mean, there's a surprising amount of oil that's coming out of that. So I don't know that's a, especially because it hasn't been ridden. I don't know whether it's just because they overfilled it when, in the manufacturing process. Oh, yeah, we haven't, we haven't really used it much. Yeah. Um, the motor is the same as the Extreme Bull Commander. So if you want to see that motor teardown, you can visit the Commander Pro teardown video. Uh, the rim is the only thing that's different. So the rim, as you can see, is a very huge spokes. It is wide. The rim is wider than the, t than the Commander Pro rim. Uh, the tire is a CST knobby tire. Just big knobs on it. Yeah. I kind of want this tire to put little, on my Master Pro. Little now. Shinko style. It is. I think there. Are, I think a lot of these manufacturers are making this style of tire now, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to do a full motor teardown of this because the motor is the exact same as the Extreme Bowl Commander or the Commander Pro, um, but the rim is a little bit thicker on uh, the, the Monst Master Pro, as we mentioned earlier. There you go. So the mud guard is basically the same as it was before. Uh, I had wished that they would change it so it actually covers more. Because what happens is there's a lot of gunk that gets thrown up by the tire into the suspension and it kind of coats that whole area. Uh, I can bring my wheel over and you'll see what I mean. Yeah. The beeper is behind the light here. Yep. Uh, and it's quite loud. I noticed when we, we turned on the store, we're like, holy. So this is my personal Master Pro that's been ridden quite a lot and cleaned a couple times. But as you can see, like a lot of gunk gets thrown up into the suspension because the inner mudguard doesn't really do much. Yeah, I'm going to tilt it down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so good. So, yeah, there's a lot of gunk in there. You can see that even without a knobby tire, it still throws up a lot of gunk. Yeah. It's the exact same width, this one, as the new one. So, yeah. they should have just made it a little bit wider. I don't know why they wouldn't have. I think, I think it's to clear the suspension. Uh, ah, yeah. But, I mean, they could have designed a, a more form fit, and then it would not get in the way, ideally. But, yeah. I mean, you can only expect baby steps. I will say that I don't like the use of countersink screws on a non-countersink part. All oh, right. That seems kind of a interesting choice. Yeah, that's odd that they would do that. 14 pounds for one battery. Damn. So that's 60 pounds worth of battery alone. <laughs> All right, so that's the V2 Master Pro. Um, some nice improvements over the V1 for sure. Um, it seems to go, it's getting better and starting to listen, especially based off our EX30 review, uh, teardown we did. Yep. Anything you want to note here that we didn't go um, I mean, the good thing is that all the parts that they changed on the Master Pro V2, except for the uh, top cover, you could technically retrofit onto your Master Pro V1 if you wanted to bring it up to date. For example, the battery packs, um, the taillight mounting screws, I believe, are the same on both. Are, I mean, they're available on this one, so you can, you can add that. 
Uh, the bottom part, the kickstand, you can buy that. You'd have to buy a battery holder, the new battery holder with the pre-threaded holes for the screws. Uh, but that is an option because it's all fairly modular. So the good thing is if you have a Master Pro V1, you can make a Master Pro 1.5 uh, and get most of the benefit. I still prefer my old headlight because it's a lot brighter than the new one. Um, yeah, but... Here and there, you can kind of mix and match and see what, make it your own. Yeah, stay tuned for our full Master Pro V2 review coming soon.